I think that one of the things that I've noticed the most is that we see the shift to digital happening and cord cutting, but we don't see it as drastically as everyone makes it out to be. Um, there's been even a lot of studies that we've kind of focused in on that people that are looking at all the digital content being consumed is adding to their media consumption, not necessarily detracting from the fact that they still want to see very well produced shows. I think some of our cable brethren do it very well in terms of HBO Go, Showtime Anytime. They've made a world where you just consume their content any way you see fit. I think the broadcasters are getting there. I think that we need to get there faster than we are, but ultimately good content is good content. Um, at ABC we have a very affluent audience, so we have a lot of people that DVR, a lot of people that have all the different smart devices. Uh, we dated Beauty Show uh, earlier this fall that when you looked at the Live Plus 3 numbers, it was 112% growth. So you see the people that want to see the content, but they're, they're busy. They're watching Sunday Night Football, they're watching a lot of different things. So to your point, uh, the consumption is there, it's just in different ways. Um, what I've seen in my role is kind of twofold. I've seen the saving of the linear feed with social media. Um, we've done that with our brand TGIT, we've done that with some of our reality shows where we're creating this need, this fear of, of you have to be a part of a live conversation or else it's not as enjoyable. But I think that can't express kind of the, the overall void of there's too much content there so you can't do that all the time. So there's one bucket of some shows on network television and others we're going to be able to push people towards you have to watch it live. The rest of it we're going to create an environment where people can consume it any way they want and we have the infrastructure and the partnerships we're doing with all of our digital partners to make sure that our content remains at a premium level. I think one of the challenges that we see is a lot of the digital companies out there want to commoditize content. Facebook, Twitter, a lot of these, they just want video on their platform. And we need to make sure very, very strongly that we're creating premium content. And if it's going to be on these platforms, it has to be considered in that light um, versus just one of two million videos that was uploaded that day. So I think that's where I'm sitting in terms of making sure that the premium content we're producing and all these other people are producing is accessible on all platforms, but is maintained in a level that is a little bit different than all the other content creators that are popping up these days. I'm excited about the content that can be produced in this new world. I think that an ABC has access to, from a financial perspective and just a relationship perspective, the best content creators in the world. But with the old way of doing things, of programming, of scheduling, of kind of setting it up in an advertised based system with a prime time and a late night and a daytime, um, there's certain restrictions that simply don't allow you to make some of the programs that otherwise you would. I think that we're already on a path where you can make content for people in different ways that they want to consume it that otherwise never would have seen the light of day. So I'm, I'm most excited about the world of if it's partnering with a digital platform or if it's just creating a new type of sitcom that we can actually make content that otherwise would have been rejected, otherwise would have had one night of, of a premiere and bad ratings and then canceled, but actually can live on a different form now. I think that we've been testing that waters for a little bit, and you've seen a little bit with the ratings and people being a little bit more apt to taking risks, um, but I think that the consumer is gonna benefit from just a different type of content production from the, the big players. I think a lot of people are making content these days, but when you look at the big media companies, they can take bigger risks now because they don't have to worry about the same limitations that they might have had to five years ago. So, it's bigger risk? I think so, because you, you still have the, the end goal of kind of, you produce something for millions of dollars, you need to see return on investment. But there's so many more distribution platforms than ever before. Uh, the studios, so we work with obviously ABC Studios as well as ABC Network. The studio can distribute worldwide on digital platforms and recoup that investment in a way that they couldn't before. So you can take a risk on a type of show that might be better suited for a digital audience or consumption in a unique way on a social media platform that would have no shot at 8.30 on a Wednesday on ABC. Uh, but it's still being able to be produced and you take that risk and if it doesn't work out you actually have the ability to test and learn from it uh, whereas I don't think you had that ability to with kind of a normal broadcast model. So I think that you have these big creators with the financial backing of big media companies that take risks that previously a lot of the smaller startups were taking. Uh, they were just getting into the content space, they wanted to try something out, but they didn't have the same backing that these big media companies do and I think that we're now going to see more of that. I really hope that, uh, especially amongst the social media platforms, that there's more um, immediacy to discovering content in real time. I think a lot of people are moving towards that. Twitter just launched their moments, part of their app. Snapchat is all about real time. But television is tailor-made for real time events. Um, whether it's an awards show, a big moment in one of our big series, 
um, a finale of Dancing with the Stars, whatever it might be. Um, social media platforms are tailor-made for, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened, I want to be a part of that too. But they're not necessarily set up as well as they could be for that. And I think that ultimately we'll get to a place where we all have different devices, we have the ability to sit in our living room, and if you hear, whether it's the 14th inning of a big sports event as far as the World Series, um, or a great finale on a huge reality show, that you can discover this in real time and immediately tune in. I think a lot of this right now, people want to be part of that real-time conversation. They want to watch on their own time, but I think people still want to be part of something social.